Yo, people, yo, people. It's becoming more and more obvious every single day that Labour are going to win the general election. And if you're wondering how this has happened, it's actually got nothing to do with Keir Starmer or Labour. It's got a lot to do with stupid crap like this. Hi, TikTok. Sorry to be breaking into your usual politics-free feed, but I'm making a big announcement today, and I've been told that a lot of you already have some views on it. So, first thing, no. I'm not sending everyone off to join the army. What I am doing is proposing a bold new model of national service for 18 year olds. They'll be able to choose to spend 12 months in a full time military commission or one weekend per month volunteering in roles within your local community, like delivering prescriptions and food to elderly people or in search and rescue. This will give all young people valuable life skills, make our country more secure and build a stronger national culture. Plus, People will receive best-in-class training in critical skills from cyber to civil engineering and leadership. But look, I know a lot of you will have questions on this, so follow the account, put your thoughts in the comments, and I'll... Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so you just heard that stupidity. That That is one of the dumbest plans I've heard in a while. I have to, like, that is a, that is a dumb plan if I ever heard one. I mean, let's just start off with the point that actually a lot of people in the comments of this this tweet that posted this out mention is compulsory volunteering. The concept of what is effectively compulsory volunteering here, because what he provides you here is a false choice. Think about it like this. Just put yourself in the shoes of an 18 year old, right? I'm not 18. I'm over 18. So this isn't going to affect me, but let's say you're 18. You just turned 18 and you wanted to join the military. When you were younger, you, you wanted to join the army. You're going to take the 12 months military commission, right? However, if you are like most 18 year olds, somebody who did not want to join the military, you're going to effectively be forced into this compulsory volunteering, right? Because look at these two options. One is a whole year of military service. The other one is one week in the month volunteering. What do you think those that initially had no intention to join the military will pick? What do you think they're going to choose? It's such a dumb choice. Like, to, it's th what this basically is, is if you didn't want to join the military, then we're going to make you volunteer. That's what this is. Because no, no person, no 18 year old is going to look at this and go, well, I didn't want to do either, but I guess I'll pick the military. No one's doing that. Literally everyone, every 18 year old who was not already inclined to join the army is going to pick option two. This is an, this is a false choice. And I love this, right? You're serving your local community, like delivering prescriptions to the elderly. Look, I've got no problem with you helping the elderly. Cool. Help the elderly. That's what volunteering is. Actual volunteering, not this version of volunteering, which is basically forced. Actual volunteering. But you would think this government, you know, you care so much about old people. You might want to help some of the old people that are dying in their homes because they can't afford to heat it. And thusly, they are, it's killing them. You might want to help them as opposed to contracting out 18 year olds to act as some kind of uber medicine service. Like, what is this? Big, like the farmer Deliveroo. Like, what, what are we doing here? What is this? What, 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 what is this? This is so incoherent and dumb. A bold new plan. It's bold because it's so dumb. It really is. Like, I don't understand who came up with this. Who came up with this? Why, why are you forcing 18 year olds into doing this, this, like this kind of stuff that they don't want to do? If you're 18, you should be looking to be charitable, be dedicating your time towards volunteering and helping people, of course. But that should be optional, not mandated by Rishi Sunak. Who, of course, as far as I'm aware, never did any volunteering when he was 18. Not that I know of. Did, did Rishi Sunak volunteer when he was 18? Did he? Uh, I think so. If, if you're watching this in the comments, dig into that. Let me know. Let me know. Did he volunteer? And I mean, what this, what this clearly is to me is a political strategy. That's what this is. This is the Tories recognizing what is probably going to happen in the general. Because contrary to what you see on platforms like X, where a bunch of lefties run around, Labour are actually not really gaining in popularity and if they are it's not got anything to do with their own policies it's largely because the tories have basically decided 
the being right wing, that's that's a thing of the past, you know. Just because we are a right wing party doesn't mean we're going to be right wing. We're going to be a bunch of lefty morons. That's what the Tories have decided to engage in. Maybe not lefties, but they're certainly not what I would call right wing anymore. What people have identified as the new right wing is Reform UK. And Reform UK is what, what Rishi Sunak is really afraid of. He's not afraid of Keir Starmer, really. Because if it wasn't for Reform UK, he, I think he would reckon he could still beat Keir Starmer, and he probably would. The reason he thinks he will lose is because he knows a lot of actual right-wing people in this country, not far-right bigots like moronic Labour supporters will claim, but normal right-wing people have decided, you know what, Reform represent me, this guy does not. I'm voting for Reform. Hence, he will lose a lot of votes to Reform, which will see Labour almost certainly win the general. Because he will be splitting the vote that he would have normally gotten with reform. That, I think, is the calculation that he is making here. And he, and what he's doing here is trying to appeal to the kind of the older generation that he thinks will, will defect to reform in the general. He thinks that by, by pushing forward this kind of military subscription, he can appeal to the crowd of people that go, young people have just had it too easy. They've had it too easy back in my day. Right, that's what that's those people is the people he's trying to appeal to with this. This idiotic nonsense. This is nonsense. <sighs> and all it does is help Keir Starmer. All it, all it does is help him. All the, like this is this honestly, this might as well be been posted on Keir Starmer's account because all this does is help him out. You this is extreme and moronic. right? Let let 18 year olds choose what they want to do with their lives. You understand life for a lot of people, people say this all the time, right? Very simple concept. Life is short. The fact that you're going to, you're going to make people dedicate hours of their time to do something that they have no interest in doing long term. is ridiculous. It's ridiculous. And it, again, it provides a false, it's a false choice. This is the big point here. This is a false choice. Because no, no 18-year-old that had that previously had no intention of joining the army is going to suddenly decide they're going to take the army choice. Unless, unless, the only, this is the only way this could work, is if, you know, because we know how 18-year-olds are. My friends are all joining the army. They're all going into the military. I'll go, I'll go. I'll jo be with, the, with my peeps, with the mandim. Right? That's the only way this is going to work. And then what? And then what? Now we're going to have a bunch of young people serving the military, which, again, I have no problem with soldiers and the military as a concept. But a lot of people, especially in the modern age, are getting a little bit skeptical of the idea of training up their young people so that they can be ready just in case they have to die in a ditch. How about improve your foreign policy? How about stop allowing these constant global hostilities? Stop edging us closer to world wars. And then we won't need to have this 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 choice, you know, in big air quotes, where young people can choose to be ready to die in a ditch. They can choose to be ready to die in a ditch because, you know, the Tories or Labour sunk them into World War Three. No, no. I mean, this whole thing is ridiculous. Let's be honest about this. This is this is so it's so absurd that they thought this was going to work. Because what's happened here is is most people, most of the old people, right, the, the folk who would who are going to defect to reform, they're not actually looking at this going, oh shit, I'm going to go back to the Tories now, because the the Tories have proven their hypocrisy. One thing that Rishi, the one of the only skills Rishi has had, and the problem is it's it's, it's negated by his own actions, is that he talks like a conservative. He talks like a a person on the right. He'll talk about limiting immigration, for example. And he knows that appeals to people on the right wing. But then, obviously, when you're when you're when you're supposed to be not looking, right, he will just as you see the incident at the University of Huddersfield, University of Huddersfield, sorry, he will unseat all these students who had their accommodation plans ready. He will, you know, they had all their accommodation plans ready. They were going to move into this accommodation and, and mere weeks, I think, before they were set to move in, he will tell them, actually, you will not be moving in there. Find somewhere else to live. We're going to house migrants there. 
that is what that is what the government is doing while you're not looking. And then Rishi's going out there telling you about how dedicated he is to stopping the boats. And this is why stuff like this fails. Because Rishi, you come across as a hypocrite, my friend. You come across as insincere. Do you not see this? It doesn't help that you are an unelected moron too. It doesn't help. So appealing to old people with this, this vague attempt at being like, yeah, well, you know, you you know, you guys know what military, you know, service is like. A lot of people back in the day were doing military service. I'm not sure if it was the case in Britain. I can't remember, to be honest with you, but I know a lot of countries were doing this. And it toughened you up. And we'll do this to the young people. We'll toughen them up, like you said, like you want. This whole, this whole plan is dumb. And it's, it's a voting strategy more than it is an actual plan to do anything. I actually have serious doubts that he will implement this if he is elected. I have serious doubts that he will. Because I think even he knows, right? This is, this is, and people have, this is effective slavery, right? That's what this is. This is government tyranny. Demanding upon 18-year-olds that they, they serve their government or serve their local community, serve their military, whatever it may be is absurd you know young people when you're 18 you're starting out your your journey of whatever your career is going to be whatever maybe your relationships are going to be how your life is going to be you're setting the foundations obviously it's not the only time you're doing it but you're setting the foundations of your life and Rishi would have you use that time and dedicate it towards compulsory volunteering and I like and I like how he uses the example, right? For example, delivering me delivering medicine to the elderly. To me, at least, this is what we call emotional blackmail. He's the because you see, if you oppose this, you, you he, people who support Rishi will turn around and say, "Are you trying to say that you don't want elderly people to have medicine? Are you trying to kill them?" That's that's the kind of stuff, right? Why? How about this? Why don't we contract out our MPs? Seen as our members of Parliament are so thoroughly useless, including the Tory ones, but not limited to just them, the Labour ones as well are thoroughly useless and do basically nothing. At least nothing of note. How about we contract that out to them? How about you, you the MPs, hop in your cars and start delivering medicine to the elderly? How about that? You can buy a nice big SUV, not on the taxpayer dime though. Don't try and put that, don't try and claim it on your expenses now. Don't try and do that. How about we contract that out to you to do and let the 18 year olds get on with their lives? How's that for an idea? Fucking. Oh, the Tories are so fucked. The Tories are so fucked. And it's all of their own making. It's all of their own making. This, this radical shift in policy for no apparent reason that they have engaged in is unreal to me. Why, why, why you decided the... You were going to elect this un you not even elect, you were gonna allow this unelected moron to reside in 10 Downing and do precisely nothing of note. He's been he's been there, you have to remember this, he's been in there for nearly two years now. It's been over a year and a half since he's been in 10 Downing. And think about it, if you're if you're if you consider yourself right wing in this country, what has Rishi Sunak done for you? Like I said, he hasn't stopped the boats. No, 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 he hasn't done that. The country's still in austerity, people, still in austerity. And obviously the Tories brought that along for you. And that's just to name a couple of the measures we've seen. And the thing is, the Tory decline really started in 2019 from, from the lockdown days. This is when the Tory party moved from being a normal right-wing party that people could resonate with to just kind of big government centrists that nobody really supports. Rishi tries to go out there and keep up this kind of image that the conservatives are actually conservative with his rhetoric, but it never actually works. All it, all, because in the end, like I said, with the University of Huddersfield example, in the background, he's really operating in very different ways than the way he's talking. But yeah, this, this voting strategy will fail miserably. And uh, let me know what you lot think about this down below. Please remember to like and subscribe, and I'm going to leave you with this to finish it off. If you live in or around Blythe, you're going to want to hear this. I don't live in Blythe, 
but uh, we, I live in Iceland. Um, we heard you were a knobhead. A, a knobhead. <laughs>